Programming languages are tools for us to write in a human readable format how to command our computers. However, programming languages are written for us. They are not written for the computer. The computer can only understand really machine code or ones and noughts. So we have to take our human readable instructions and convert them into instructions that the computer can understand. And there's a few ways that we can do this. We can do it via interpretation, compilation, or a mixture of the two. However, what I want to first of all establish is the implementation is separate from the language. The language is just a language. For example, French, German, English, so forth. Now also what we have is the implementation. Now that is the bit that's different. It's separate. Take JavaScript for example. JavaScript back in the 90s was in fact converted by an interpreter. However, in the most recent years, we also have a just-in-time compiler, the Google Chrome V8 engine. So the implementation of the language changed, but it's still the same language. So separate the programming language from the way that that programming language is implemented. They're separate. Now, let's take a look at the first way of taking our script and converting it. So we've got a script here and it's running through the interpreter. Now, the interpreter has all of the functions predefined and what we do is we tell it to start running some instructions. So you start running some instructions and let's say I have a list of instructions as your programs are and your interpreter says, okay, what's the first instruction? You hand it the first instruction, it's got that predefined, it runs that function, and then it looks back at the script again, and it says, what's the next line? Okay, you give it the next line, the next command or instruction. Then it goes ahead and runs the next instruction. Now this is actually quite slow, because what you're doing is you're waiting for it to go for the next instruction. So we also have something called compilers. Now compilers, what they do is they take all of the script, all of the programming language that you've written, all those commands, and it converts it into machine code. It automatically just converts it straight away. So now what you have is the ability for the compiler to take all of it, compile it into instructions, and then what happens is the compiler can just go, right, next one, next one, next one, next one, next one, next one, next one. And that actually makes it very, very fast. There's no delay. Once it's been compiled, it's ready to just run those instructions, one after the other. But there's a little bit of a problem here, debugging. With the interpreter, what you were doing was you were feeding it instructions. So it went, okay, what's the first instruction? Okay, I'll run the first instruction, no problem. Then let's say you run the next instruction, no problem, but something bad happens. Now the interpreter at that point could stop at that point and automatically update the programmer who was trying to run this program, there's something wrong with that instruction that you've just given me. Now a compiler is a bit different. A compiler is gonna take all of the script, all of the syntax, and it's gonna convert it all into one large set of instructions. And then what a compiler will do is it will simply just start running instructions. And let's say there's an error. Do you know what it's going to do? It's just going to carry on. And this is the danger of compiled languages. You could fill up memory, you could cause a system crash, and it would carry on. And the problem is debugging also, you need to know where the bug is. So you've literally got to go through all of these instructions, and you've got to find out what went wrong. But it didn't stop at the point where it went wrong. So the interpreter did, whereas the compiler didn't, and that makes the interpreter easier for debugging, but slower and the compiler quicker at executing commands, but harder to debug. So what we have is a combination of both of these technologies. You have, first of all, the just-in-time compilers. Now there's lots of other types of compilers that kind of do this. You've got AOT compilers and so forth, but mainly we have a just-in-time compiler for JavaScript, and it's a mixture of interpretation and compilation. The just-in-time part is the interpretation. It makes it easy to debug. But then also you've got the compilation, which means that your instructions get converted into machine code, making them very, very fast. So you get speed and you also get debugging. 
It's not as fast as full compilation, but it's easier to debug, it's easier to maintain, and to be honest with you, in most cases, it's perfectly quick enough. So what does this mean? Well, what it does is it leaves the instructions as is. So let's say I have my instructions out and then I want to invoke a function. What it, what it will do is it will take that just in time and compile it and then run those instructions. Then I tell it to go get another function. Now that's still in script. So it goes ahead and pulls that out and it converts it into machine code. But now there's a problem. There's a problem with these sets of instructions here and it causes an error. So what happens is the just in time part says, hold on a moment, I've just compiled this and there's a problem. There's an error and there's a bug. And that is how you combine both technologies. Just in time means I've just converted that set of instructions in your program and there's something wrong there. So it creates an error right there, whereas a compiler would have just gone blah, 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 and it would have carried on and it could have done a lot of damage as well, like filling up memory, crashing the machine, and then how on earth would you be able to debug that? So that is the whole point behind just-in-time compilers. You've got other types of compilers like AOT, ahead-of-time compilers. The way that they do things is a little bit different, but at the end of the day, you have all these different implementations. So understand you mainly have the interpreter or you have the compiler and then anything else is just a mixture of the two, giving you the benefits of both worlds.